Hello everybody. Today's game is Alexander Grischuk with the white pieces versus Evgeny Bereyev with the black pieces. This game is uh, from 2001. Grischuk was uh, 2700 already and uh, Bereyev was 2719. So very uh, evenly matched players. This game arises from a French defense. Grischuk played E4. Barev, a French defense specialist, played E6, D4, D5. And at this time, uh, Grischuk was playing the advanced variation. All right. He has a lot of uh, games in this variation right here. And we're going to look at some of the uh, strategic elements of it. So C5, C3, Knight C6, Knight F3, all typical stuff here. Knight H6 is played. So a little bit offbeat. But it is it is played usually uh, knight to uh, e7 is played and then a knight comes out to either f5 or g6 with the attack on the d4 or e5 squares. Here there's a little bit of a different uh, plan here. So this move uh, knight h6 allows black to keep open uh, the diagonal for this bishop right here to come to b4. So for instance after c takes d4 without having to move this knight again. Right, this knight is here, then the knight will have to move here or here. So it kind of saves the tempo uh, there, okay? Also, with the knight being here, it can just jump to f5. So it's not in the way at first and then having to go to f5. So it's here, and then it can just jump here, leaves this diagonal open. Another point is that it also serves a provocative purpose because, of course, White has the choice now to just simply capture here and at the cost of him giving up the dark square bishop, he can um, ruin uh, black's pawns. All right, so there's something uh, to think about there. However, if black, uh, white does capture here, then the G file will be open for black to use for an attack on the king side. All right, this is a similar theme that happens in the um, uh, Bronstein Larson attack in the um, uh, Carol Khan, right? The knight uh, f6 variation of the Carol Khan, where black does not castle on the king side but winds up using the g file as an avenue of attack. Gristic ignores this and simply plays bishop uh, d3. So, for example, bishop takes h6, g takes. Bishop e2, for example, rook g8. And this is the type of scenario that black is looking for. Okay. So bishop d3 is played. C takes d4. So Bereyev decides to resolve the center. And, you know, with the typical French ideas now. Queen b6. Right. Putting more pressure on d4. Knight f5. Etc. Now... After the center is resolved, now Grishtik decides to take. So, G takes H6, C takes D4, and Bishop D7. Okay. So, Bishop D7 is here so that now when Barev plays Queen B6, the D4 pawn is actually threatened. With the Bishop on C8, there's always this uh, funny uh, tactic here. So, for example... Uh, queen b6, let's just say castle here. Of course, ignoring the queen b2, but let's just say knight takes d4. The idea is after knight takes d4, queen, de queen takes d4, and then bishop b5 check, winning the queen. So the idea behind bishop d7 is that when queen b6 is played, the b pawn and the d pawn are actually threatened here. Knight c3. Okay, now this is one of the benefits for white for um, that result from black resolving the center early. Because if black keeps attention in the center here by not exchanging here, eventually this knight's going to have to make a decision to come maybe to a3 or perhaps to d2. So with this exchange by black in the center, it makes it very clear for and easy for white just to put his knight there. Moving forward. So now queen b6 again. So here we have it. d4 is threatened and b2. 
is uh, threatened. This is this forces Grishik to play this bishop to here in order to protect these pawns. All right, the bishop blocks the b2 pawn, and now this pawn is protected. Rook g8, just as we talked about. Castles. All right, so he parries the threat to g2 by just simply castling into it. And now, Boreev plays this move. Knight takes e5. Right now, he wins a pawn, okay? But now we, we've seen Grishchik for many years. We know that Grishchik is a dangerous uh, uh, tactical uh, player. So he wins a pawn, but this is a poison pawn, okay? Better for black is to, to keep developing castle queen side with the double edge game to come. Rook c1, king b8 getting off the uh, open file there or semi-open file. Queen d2. And again, the battle is going to be double edged. You know, with the opposite wing castling. Black has the open g file. Okay. And white has the, uh, you know, more space. Uh, superior pawn structure. But black has the two bishops. Again, to go along with the uh, open G file. Instead of uh, doing that. He grabbed the center pawn. And it's hard not to grab a central pawn. Okay if you can grab it. So let's see what happens. So knight takes E5. Knight takes E5. And again the idea is to grab this bishop. Bishop takes B5 with an attack on the rook. Okay. So all is good. However. Queen H5. Okay. And now the rook is immune uh, to capture on f1 because of the uh, mate that would, would happen. Okay, so there will be mate in two actually. So if this bishop, i just show you if the bishop captures mate. So rook g7. All right. So now what's the price that black has had to pay now is now he loses his uh, right to castle and now his king is uh, forced to linger in the middle of the board while Grisha builds up his attack of course if uh, Boreev can survive then he'll you know be up a pawn rook f e1 so now black has to worry about all type of discovery uh, attacks after say knight takes d5 rook d8 and again, and this move rook d8 is stemming from from the fear of move like uh, knight d5, for example, exposing uh, the king. You know, after say uh, pawn takes on d5. All right. So it's an oversight by Barev, of course, but again, he's being pressured here, and he's he's worried about knight takes d5. And the problem is here is now he's he entombs his king. Okay. Now better would have been uh bishop e7, which deals with the threat of knight uh d5, and it leaves escape room for the king of knee b, you know, via you know d8 or something like that. You know. Now not to say that black is out of hot water because white still has compensation for the pawn you know rookie three is a good move here again if move like rook c8 then simply knight takes d5 so back to the game rook d8 was played and now what happens here is knight takes b5 queen has to take to ensure material equality and now powerful move knight takes f7 right Rook takes f7, and now rook takes e6 check. So now, just like that, the cost of a piece, black's uh, cover is blown, and he's forced to resign here. After bishop takes e7, then simply, excuse me, after bishop e7, then simply rook takes e7, and then the other rook comes gloriously into the game. So Barev was forced to resign um, after knight takes f7. So that is it, and I hope that you uh, enjoyed, you know, that beautiful game uh, from Grishchuk. And um, please don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, click on my links below. The DVDs and books are related 
uh, to the opening that we just discussed. I'll see you guys on the next video.